Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, and it's a chilly Wednesday here. I know in Texas, probably across most of the country, you're just all so chilly, so we thought we'd go super tropical in celebration of our guest this week. You're gonna get to meet Sonia Oswald and another BFF, Joanne Stratakos is here, so you get to meet them. We are Living Felt based in Central Texas. If you've stumbled across the feed, welcome to our live show. Today we're gonna have like a BFF chit chat, uh, kind of like we had on the last show. So thank you all so much for being here. I wanna say hi to Kathy in Idaho, hi to Pamela in Oregon, hi to Marianne all the way in Australia and Audrey in in the UK. Hi to Wendy in Ireland. I know the gals already said hi to you. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. Um, we have Gwen Davis is here. Crystal is here. Gina from Wisconsin. I know it's cold up there for sure. Uh, Joanne in Tennessee. Jane in New Mexico. Maureen all the way in Canada. Y'all all just make our Wednesday so special. So thank you for being here. Um, so this is a live show. You're welcome to participate in the chat. We're going to do an interview so you get to learn a little bit more about Sonia and you'll get a preview of her upcoming class. If you can't figure that out from the backdrop, we're going to give you a little closer view. And so every Everything's happening in the live chat. Participate, ask questions. You get a chance to win prizes. And if you're watching the replay, thank you for watching. You can comment down below and you also get entered to win prizes. So on that note, I have a couple of prizes from our last show with Don Edwards. And we gave away our one of our wet felting activity packs, the love notes or a basic um, wet felting starter tool set. So our winners from the replay are Whitney Baller and Judy Townsend. Congratulations, you are welcome to claim your prize just by going to the Contact Us page on our website. So to celebrate this very tropical theme that we have going on today, have a couple of lovely and very magical fairies lined up to show you a few goodies. And the first up is the lovely fairy, Anne. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Hey y'all, thank you so much for hanging out with us on this very chilly day. <laughs> so to help warm up our spirits, we have just been in such a tropical mood lately and we wanted to share some, some just island vibes that we've been feeling. So this lovely collection right here is going to be, we're excited to share, it's, it, it's going to be a new studio pack. You're going to be able to purchase this real, real soon here. So in this tropical assortment, we have got 19.5 micron merino top in sea glass, Bali, cornflower, zinnia, chartreuse, and coral. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with us today. Up next is Fairy Kayla. Woo! <laughs> Hey everybody, Fairy Kayla here. Just wanted to share another kind of tropical themed pack with you. This one is our New Zealand Corydale Studio Pack. It comes with uh, six different colors in here, one ounce is each. It's great for making some fuzzy textures here and I just want to share what we've got in here. This orange one is tangerine, moss, pumpkin, lagoon, lima bean, and marigold. So super fun, super bright and cheery. And then I did have a tropical question for everybody. How many tropical birds does it take to screw in a light bulb? <laughs> How many <laughs> tropical, tropical birds, birds does it take to screw in a light bulb? Well, if one can't, two can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marie, I'll turn it back over to you. <laughs> yep, here comes the <laughs> I just see a big round of hearts for the fairies. That's just two of our magical crew. We're so grateful for them. They pack your orders, they answer your calls, they answer your emails, and they make absolutely everything that we sell. And uh, they even help name it too. So today's a special show because we have a couple of our friends here. Many of you are in our group, Living Felt Friends on Facebook, which is where we hang out all week long. And um, so the first guest I have today is Joanne Stratakos, who came all the way from Pennsylvania to visit. So come on in, Joanne. Hi. I'm going to have you stand right over here. Sure. sure. And say hi, hi to Joanne. Hi, oh, do y'all have a mug? Can someone grab one of our mugs? So Joanne is also a felt maker, but she's also a potter, and you make our mugs. I do. And lots and lots of wonderful pottery. Thank you. So say hi to your friends. Hi, friends. How's everybody <laughs> out there? Margaret, Bonnie, I miss you guys, but I'm having a blast, and this is my 
dream to be here. So, <laughs> so I don't know if I'm awake or if I'm dreaming. So, <laughs> so Joanne's business is called Mudworks. Her pottery business is called Mudworks. And many of y'all have seen uh, this wonderful mug that I use so often on the show. And you make these for us. I do. Yeah. It's exclusively. Ex for you. Well, you would think. <laughs> yeah. Since yeah, they have our it. name on. <laughs> for but, sure. And right. so tell everyone about your little gnome. Oh, anytime I go anywhere, I take a piece of felting or a special piece of pottery with me. So this gnome's been. Um, from Pennsylvania all the way to Austin Airport and then to everywhere that I go out to eat or do or anything like that and he'd get his picture taken and um, and we just take him everywhere that we go. <laughs> and then he'll go back home with me and he'll go back up on my counter and these are my travel gnomes Fun. or my travel pieces. So and she's been posting pictures of him out to dinner and doing various absolutely. things. Absolutely. If you follow me on Facebook, you'll see all the pictures and stuff Fun. like that. Yeah. And you'll see all the stuff in uh, Over living... there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see all this stuff in the Living Felt Shop because I'm on sensory overload and I've been doing nothing but taking pictures and videos and stuff of everything. And I was waiting until after I was introduced to post a lot of stuff. <laughs> so looking forward to meeting everybody online. And Marie, thank you so yeah, very much for, for having being here. me. We're glad to have you too. Thank Take you, Joanne. Bye. Enjoy. Bye. Yay! So y'all can get these these mugs in our shop. You can also visit her uh, pottery studio, Mudworks, and uh, her when her felt she felt she calls it Woolworks. And so today we're gonna have a little bit longer of a visit with a friend, also a BFF online. She's been here to Living Felt a few times to take classes, which has been great fun. So we've had an opportunity to get to know each other a little bit over the years. And she's back to teach a class for the school, FeltingTutorials.com. So please give a BFF welcome to Sonia Weeks. Oswald. Hi, Sonia. Welcome. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Nice <laughs> to see everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Hi, Mom. <laughs> hi, Mom. <laughs> So Sonia has been in the studio with me this week. We are filming her class on felting tropical macaws, and we have a chance to just visit and sit together and chat. How's that sound? Sounds great. Good. Thank okay. You. Please have a seat. And thank y'all all for being here. So I've had the pleasure of uh, being here this week watching Sonia felt these lovely pictures and we're gonna give you a little more insight about that. But I like taking these opportunities for people to get to know a little bit more about our friends and in this case, one of the teachers in our school. Have you been having fun? Oh, I've been having a blast. <laughs> I just wanna throw the wool on the floor and jump in. <laughs> Roll around a little bit. <laughs> Oh, it's so fun, so fun. I needed to bring a trailer truck to take it back home. <laughs> oh, good things there are mail. Good thing there are mail trucks to, That's right. <laughs> to, to send stuff back. Um, so, Sonia, you um, tell everyone kind of when you started felting and how you got introduced to it. Okay, I started felting in I think it was about 2012. Um, sadly, a dog that I'd had since I was just in early college passed away at the age of 18 and I was looking for a way to console my little boy who was two at the time. No, I know, he was heartbroken which broke my heart sure. and um, I saw all these wonderful felt works online and you know how sometimes makers look at something and they think, oh well if they can make it, I can make it. Yes. And so, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh I can do it cheaper. <laughs> So I went to the craft store and I bought a little kit and I made my first dog and he was really, really, really awful. And I think we, we have a picture of that. Yeah, no, he's he's not awful. He's not awful. He's he's really cute. So I think we're showing a, a little picture of that dog. And um and then do we have pictures of a couple of your even more recent dogs? Now he was really cute. So he's from a kid. Now you still occasionally make dogs from uh, time to time, right? I love to make dogs. I'm still really striving for reality in my dogs. Um, and But I have a great time doing it. Um, I do, um, do take commissions from some people and it's just really fun. Um, yeah, that's super fun. Yeah, you do a variety of things. You oh definitely, my gosh! Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't pin myself down to any one thing. <laughs> and Jordan, where are we now? We're Miss... gonna be back in the front. Uh, uh, right close up. Let me okay, know. okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, and so, so do you still have the dog now? Oh yeah, I still mm -hmm. have him. Mm -hmm. um, actually, he served a great purpose. My little boy slept with him for oh. a while, and he sits on his shelf now. So I do still have it. Yeah. Uh, so I always like to know, like, you know, do you, tell me about like your first recollection of doing art as a kid. 
I remember when I was in preschool and my mom came to pick me up early. I have this recollection of doing a finger painting of snakes because, I mean, you know, that's easy to finger paint. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom came to pick me up and I remember pitching a royal fit because I was not done finger painting those snakes. And I was so mad that she came and got me early and I had to leave. And so that's, that's I think, my earliest memory. And then what about just artistic influence as a kid? You oh, yes, I did. My mm -hmm. mom has always been able to do anything that she wanted to. And she did a lot of china painting. She makes me ornaments that are just gorgeously beaded every year. So I saw her creating everything. And there was never anything she couldn't master. Oh. And my dad painted and drew. He was an engineer. And um, I have some of his paintings. He passed away in 2006. But I have some of his paintings hanging in my home. Mm, that's nice. And so your parents, um, so he passed away in 2006. So you were felting after that yes. period. You yeah, were sadly, it, he never got to see him. But your that. mom's a supporter. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I think we actually have a couple of pictures of your mom's china painting. Yeah. 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 And so she's painting on like found pottery. Or like how does that work? No. And she hasn't china painted in a while. She oh. did it. She did it many years ago. Um, and I think that she painted on already created china and then it was fired and glazed after. I, oh. don't, I don't really know how the process works. Oh, right. I see. Oh, yeah. So we're looking at I see some of her uh, china paintings up there now. And then your dad, you said your dad was a painter. I think we have one of her dad's paintings. Yeah. 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 Okay. This one here. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. he started out with oil painting, and then um, I think that the long dry time was really um, difficult for him to work with, and so he picked up acrylics when he has developed um, congestive heart failure. Oh. And it was something that he could do from his hotel room. Wow. And so he did some gorgeous acrylic paintings while he was waiting on a heart transplant, and sadly, oh. he, that's when he passed away, was while oh. he was um, waiting on that. But he was but, painting. But he was painting, awesome. and and it's so nice to have those pieces of him in the home. Ah, oh, so you had you had art around you, but you didn't study art, did you? No, I remember one time I put together a portfolio, and oh. I went to an art school. I, it, my recollection is very hazy, um, but. Yeah, nothing ever happened with that. I ended up going into science, and yeah. I am an analyst for a federal agency now, so mm -hmm. yeah. But working in, really, with natural resources, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, I have a master's degree in wildlife and fisheries science, and I mm -hmm. work in the forestry arena, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is interesting, because that's a common theme in your work, right? Yes, I love nature. Um, I love the outdoors. I don't spend as much time outside as I used to, but I do. <laughs> I love birds and I absolutely love waterfalls and mountain vistas. I live in East Tennessee near the Great mm -hmm. Smoky Mountains and so there's a lot of, of beautiful scenery in right. East Tennessee yeah. that's that's very inspiring. Yeah, I imagine. And I think we brought a, a waterfall, we have one waterfall picture and I, I kind of remember when you did this. Do you remember what year you did this waterfall? Um, it's been a few years back, right? Yeah, I want to say it was maybe five or six years ago and it was featured in the McGee Tyson Airport in Knoxville. Oh, that's yeah. fun. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's really that's really a pretty picture. Thank I like you. yeah, I like that one. But so when we you and I were talking a little bit and I asked kind of maybe what is a favorite in your work and you were saying that you really like a challenge. Oh, I do. Yeah. If, if something is if something looks like something I don't think I can do, then that's what I'm going to do. You've got to have to try it. <laughs> I'm going to have to try yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> which is one thing I've always noticed about you is you, you like to do a variety of things, which is something I think we share. I like to go, well, I want to try that. I want to, you want to push yourself. And so I think we brought some of, uh, some of your favorite pieces here, like your winter coat. Uh, it was really a nice, a nice coat. Tell us just a little bit about that coat. Okay. Yeah. I mm -hmm. took actually one of the felting tutorials classes and, um, it was, 
I believe Diana Nagorna's mm-hmm. felting address, and then I thought, you know, this is not that much different. And I actually had done a couple of coats prior, mm-hmm. but I really wanted to do one where I didn't sew the sleeves on. I right. wanted to do it in one single piece. Right. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it, and I just went for it, and it it was heavy and really difficult to <laughs> roll it was a challenge but uh-huh. i'm i was so pleased with it when i finished yeah. and i actually wore it here because you know it's supposed to be warm in texas i don't know <laughs> what marie was thinking with this weather but she didn't get my memo that it should be warm <laughs> well it was it was warm i think when dawn was here which was funny, which is funny cuz she she's from michigan yeah but that that is really a great coat um, but then we brought some other things like your hat is that the next one? we brought your tell us about your mad hatter's hat Oh, so um, my, the name of my business is actually Bad Hatter. This was when I thought I could shoehorn myself into one thing mm. that I felt. And I do love to make hats. And I love to take commissions for hats. And I get some for some really weird stuff. And one guy reached out to me and asked if I could make just a giant oversized hat with an octopus that featured some of his beads on it and i mean there's design on the other side and this hat i mean it weighed a ton wet it was almost (laughs) as heavy as the coat and so difficult to make because he wanted such a large end product and he makes large glass beads that are gorgeous but it Mm. needed to be able to hold that weight right maybe thick Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but when i was finished with it i you know i was just in love with it. It was really Uh, hard for me to send it to uh, him. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's fun. Oh, and then I think we have one more, and that's your fairy costume. Tell us a little little bit about the fairy costume. Yes. What brought you to make that, and how often do you wear it to the grocery store? (laughs) You know, every day. I'm a little extra now. Um, No, I belly dance, and I salsa dance, and so I... um, I have a friend who is a photographer who's done some dance photography for me, and he was getting ready to close out his studio, and he asked me if I'd do one final photo shoot, and I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity to make a fantasy costume in wool, and so I I drew a design, and I thought, okay, okay, I'm going to Nuno felt this. Um, and I put it together, and I was, I'm was i always shocked when something turns out to look like my design in the end. Yeah. <laughs> I was thrilled with it, though, and he did such a good job with the photos, and we had a blast. And I would absolutely make, you know, another costume of that variety. I'm also, I have to admit, I have always been really inspired by your fairy costume that oh. you made. The, it's been many years ago. For a, wasn't it a charity or it was, a breast cancer? It was cancer? for Art Brought. Mm-hmm. 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 I remembered that, That's and sweet. I was really inspired by uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> That's sweet. That was that was fun. It would be fun to, fun to do again, probably. <laughs> do something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I couldn't do the whole. I couldn't model it. <laughs> oh. I need the I need the other the other models. Um, so those those are all really fun pieces, and you have some more current work even that we brought. I think one of your challenges beyond the wearables was doing some portraits. Yeah, so this year I had a wonderful mm-hmm. opportunity to um, do my very first exhibit in a local museum gallery, and um, I chose to do portraits, and It was really fun. So I started working on them right after Christmas last year. And I did, I think... Just last year? The 21 or 2020? No, I think it was 21. Wow. Okay. I think so. When was the exhibit? It was in May of 2021. Oh, right. So it was... So you started working on them in 2020. No. It's 2022. I know. Oh, okay. I did them last on dates. <laughs> the exhibit was in May. In May of 2021, and I did the uh-huh. portraits all in um, January and early February. Oh, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I sat down, and I did, I tried to average a portrait a night. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at this picture of the woman uh, right now. Can you tell us a little bit about, yes. about that one? Yes. I wish that I had looked up her name again. I've forgotten it. But she was a very well-known Native American um, suffragist of a type. And I took her black and white photograph. That's from, right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I from, remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from yes. the Library of Congress. Mm-hmm. And I thought, 
what would she look like if I reimagined her in color? I love that. And so mm -hmm. I just reimagined her portrait in color. I had a blast with her. I think she's absolutely phenomenally beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, that was, that was great. It you was a bucket list thing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Really beautiful. Uh huh. Lovely piece. And then, so that exhibit, how many pieces did you have that in, in that exhibit? I was trying to recall and I think it was 14 or 15. That's just amazing. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. That's a lot. Thank you. And so, but really you didn't fun. do it in two weeks. Make um, all the pieces in two weeks. No, I made it through the month of January and early February. That's still crazy to me. That's really <laughs> And so what like what fibers were you using for those portraits and were they hundred percent needle felted or were they needle and wet felted? Um, yeah, so none of them were wet felted. Okay. I did all of the portraits in needle felt and mm -hmm. some of them are on a hundred percent wool background, gotcha. some are on a mm -hmm. wool blend background. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, I like to use a mix of your MC1 fiber from Living Felt, mm -hmm. and I like to use a little bit of Merino Top as well. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I sometimes find that Merino Top offers a wider variety of shades. A lot of shades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so I can make my own custom blends, and I just I tear apart the fibers and blend them into them my short. own little mm -hmm. bats mm -hmm. to work with. Um, if you ever do portraits, um, sometimes you just need almost a single hair. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hair's too. width. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Developing mm -hmm. the skin tones was so challenging. It was so new to me and so fun. Mm, yeah, they're really, they're really, really beautiful. Thank you. And then I think I, you know, I asked you about like your favorite thing you, you've ever made. And um, I think we were going to put up a little work in process, made photo to start while you tell us about that. So tell them about the, just, you know, one of your favorite pieces that you ever felt it. I had a gentleman who was friends with my husband ask for a recreation only in a very large size of a place that they he and his wife had visited in France. It was a, a sort of a wine chateau up on a hill that used to be a monastery. And he asked me if I could recreate that in wool and have it framed for him. And I took one look at the picture and I was like, sure. <laughs> but I was like, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. There is no way I could do this. And I had no idea how to transfer a picture to wool. So I didn't. I right. And I can't draw. If you hand me a pencil, forget it. It's a stick figure, nothing else. Right. And um, I took that picture and I just freehand did the wool recreation. And at the time, my little boy was playing soccer. At least he was pretending to play soccer. <laughs> and so I did the whole thing on the soccer field in little, in my foam. I was using one of your pieces of foam. It was about, yeah, Like a big. 10 by like, 7? Yeah, small one. <laughs> like a small one. And so I was having to do it in little quadrants. <laughs> and I would have people on the soccer field come up and stand behind me and watch, which, of course, was so nerve-wracking. Right. Then you're like, the pressure's on. Huh? I know. Yeah. I know. But I I'll tell you, when I finally finished, I had the biggest sense of accomplishment. It's not perfect. I see the imperfections, sure. but I was so proud of myself. Oh. And it's um, one of the only pieces I've ever had professionally framed. And I was thrilled the, the local gallery that framed it did an amazing job mm. and picked out a great frame. And I think we have a picture of that. Let's, let's pull that up and show the full screen of that. Too. Yeah, yeah, it's not in the and frame. The, and the, the client was really happy with it. Too, yeah, he was really yeah. happy and hung it in his wine cellar. And um, yeah, so I was, I was really thrilled with that. Yeah. And it's just one of those challenge projects where you sort of show yourself what you yeah, can do. Yeah, yeah. I like to tell people, you know, people will tell me all the time. Um, sometimes I teach some dance lessons and they'll say, I can't do that. And I say, uh, yeah, you can. Right. Um, you know, so just try. Right. And I, I always like stories that when people do things with like, would they achieve something with not the grandest of studios, not the grandest <laughs> of scales? It's like we always think that somebody else has this full setup and that's why they can <laughs> when, you know, we have mutual friends who, uh, many friends who they felt on the kitchen counter. Even yeah. people who are very accomplished still just work at the dining room table. Yeah, or on case, the soccer, the soccer field. field <laughs> peeling and lifting your 
Yeah, peeling and lifting your piece from from piece to piece. Oh, that's well, right. but now you come here and you you brought a, a really fun project, which I think. And so I'll just bring this one in. This is going to be uh, Sonia's class. Yeah. Uh, which is felting tropical macaws. I keep wanting to say toucans because of Kayla's joke. <laughs> <laughs> toucans. I know. I know. Just put that over here, maybe. Okay. Uh, tropical macaws. And I really like this project because you've made it very beginner friendly, I think. Yeah. I hope so. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said before, I can't really draw. Um, I tend to look at things and see shapes in them, and I find wool to be really amenable to creating shapes mm -hmm. because you can move them a little if you need to, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. You're not stuck with a line that you have to keep erasing. Right. Um, and so what I've, what I've done here is I've provided some methodology that can help guide people who don't yep. feel comfortable with drawing. Um, and even if you don't feel like you can eyeball it, I've given you some guides so you don't really have to. And I think yeah. that, um, mm -hmm. you know, even though it's kind of looks, it, you know, intimidating or splashy, um, yeah. it, it's really not difficult. Yeah, I think it has a, a bit of wow factor. And in the course, she'll I'll be lean for just a second. She's In the course, she's going to make the blue macaws and then show what's different about the red macaws. So to show you what else, what you might change a little bit to do the red macaws. So we'll outline the supplies for doing either the red or the blue, but she'll take you through every step of making the blue macaws and explain all of the steps. And um, yeah, it definitely has a lot of wow factor for sure, I think. Yeah, yeah. thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. My mm -hmm. husband and I went to Costa Rica many years ago before digital cameras were really a thing. Um, and he had just gotten into photography and he took some amazing photos while we were there. And um, this was one of the photos. He, he actually took a picture of two red macaws mm -hmm. in an almond tree. And I have admired that photo for years. And so um, I pulled it out one day and thought, I'm gonna give this a try and, yeah. and, and try to recreate it and felt. It's very cool. It's really fun. And it's a, it's a combination of wet felting and needle felting. And even if you, we decided that, you know, if you have at least an introductory level uh, to wet felting and or needle felting that you can do this project. Sure, right? absolutely. Mm -hmm, the way it's broken down. And um, I'll just give a little spoiler alert. She does felt with the electric sander as is done, yeah, by a few <laughs> a few courses in the school, use the electric sander. You don't have to, but if you're looking for a project that would be a good toe in the water for using an electric sander, I think this is a good one because it's not too big. Yeah, it's not like you're trying to tackle your first dress with yes. a sander, and, yeah. you know. I would <laughs> not advise. I remember the first time I ever used a sander, I was so confused. I remember thinking, well, isn't the sandpaper gonna rip the, you know, cause I had no idea that you don't you use sand. the sandpaper, you right, take right. it off. Yeah, um, Yeah. so it's a great project for using the sander. The sander mm -hmm. is my best friend. I have lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and we do, we do show you exactly the sander we use. We use the same one throughout the school. Uh, we, we reference that in the supplies and you'll get a full supply list and a uh, kit option will be available. I'm sure we have questions, hey, Jordan? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we so. have some, some comments and some questions. Cool. A lot of people are saying how encouraging it is that they don't need to have to draw to do this <laughs> course. Yeah. Um, as far as some of the show and tell that you had, um, the waterfall that you had, a lot of people are kind of asking, is it needle felted, wet felted? How did you go about that one? That's a great question. It's needle felted. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yep, it's needle felted and it's on about, I started with a black background mm -hmm. so that I didn't have to lay black on right. top of everything. Yeah, smart. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that way I could bring in the light instead of having to create so much shadow on a white background. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Everybody, oh, sorry, <laughs> everybody is just blown away at the talent that you have. Oh, it's, it's thank amazing. Thank you. <laughs> And any questions on the class? Now we not, not quite, quite yet. Now. A lot so, of excitement, though. A lot of excitement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the class is probably we're thinking about sixty to ninety days out. Still, we we had the pipeline is pretty full so far. It's we're not even into spring yet, but we we've, we've done a lot of filming for the school. And for those of you who don't know, uh, we'll pop that up. It's of course we have it up here with us. But uh, feltingtutorials.com is our online school. It's absolutely free to join. So what you do is you just join 
join and you can take a number of our free classes and see does that work for you. The classes are streaming. You don't download and, and the only thing you can download are supply lists, supporting materials. Like in this case, you'll get reference imagery and diagrams, but you don't download any of the videos. So you can watch it on your phone, you can watch it on your tablet, Mac, computer, and you've taken a few classes. You mentioned Diana's, but you've yes. taken a few more. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I've taken a lot of classes, mm -hmm. um, and I love every one of them. I have taken um, several of the, the port, um, not portraits, the landscape yes. classes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I have signed up for Dawn Edwards hat class, um, mm -hmm. and I have watched it, but I haven't had a chance to work on uh, it. Yeah. yeah, I'm really excited, That's and um, I'm excited about some of the upcoming classes, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big fan. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's fun, and we're just we're just so grateful to have our friends, you know, coming to teach and, and share with you all. So I hope that you'll check it out, and I think Sonia's class is really going to be a lot of fun. And if you feel at all intimidated, we think that you know you can try and just do a single bird. Yes, right. Just absolutely. do one of the birds, or do a slice, even if it's just the head. You know, yep. but I, I think you're going to find it very approachable, and um, you actually did the picture pretty fast because <laughs> this picture was done here in two days and you didn't have any homework. You've just been out partying at night. <laughs> Oh, I didn't say that to your husband. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we got to party with the goats last night. It was awesome. Shout out to Joyce for letting us. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I am a really fast felter. And at home without any kind of, you know, verbiage or mm -hmm. anything like that, it takes me from start to finish probably about two and a half hours to do this photo. Yeah. If I didn't have to wait on it to dry. Of course, I have to wait on it to dry. But Yeah. So I think you'll find that the approach she takes is going to be um, simple for you too. She gives you a couple of options to do it and it's it's like a weekend project you can do. So it's sometimes the longest time is getting your station set up, right? <laughs> Gathering your stuff. And so we used minimal wet felting setup. Yep. Plus yep. the sander, but you can yep. also use the palm washboard or just your hands or just roll. And then when the kits are available, that's all they'll need. A couple that's of right. little things, needle right. things. What else you got, Jordan? Um, a couple people are interested in the blending. So I have two questions. Do you blend Merino and MC1 together? Uh, no. No, I don't think that that would work. I mean, I use them both in the same projects, but I don't physically blend them right. together. Yeah, very um, different. Yeah, they're very different textures, and I don't think that they would work very well in a blend together. Mm -hmm. okay. And then when you are blend, but, excuse me, blending, do you use hand carters? Do you do it by hand, or do you do, use machine carters? <laughs> I have hand carters. I have tried to use them. It's a hot mess for me. <laughs> I just, <laughs> it looks like I'm fighting with a bunch of cheap and they're winning. So it's, for me, easier to just use my hands and tear the fiber. Um, but then I also don't blend a large quantity at a time. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I blend a small amount and then if I need more, I blend more. Some people prefer to blend a large quantity mm -hmm. at a time so that they have a consistent color. Mm -hmm. And for that, I think hand carters might be the better option. Certainly, if I felt proficient, I would use the hand carters. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have a little training session. We way. might need to. I thought it's, I'm not even sure I know how to hold them the right way. Uh, it's a mess. <laughs> well, on the topic of things you probably know how to write, hold the right way, what kind of sander would you recommend people kind of keep their eye on if they want to get one in preparation for this class? Oh, okay. Um, well, it'll be in the resource section for yeah. the class. Mm -hmm. And Marie may have to tell me the sander that you use oh, here. Mm -hmm. We use the Makita adjustable sander. And I think we even have a link to it on if you go to our regular site, Living Felt. I think it's in the FAQs because it's a very common question we get. So you can click on an FAQ. We show you the exact sander because I bought the wrong one the first time. <laughs> so my first experience with using a sander was I bought the Makita and the one I bought was like the little brother model. Oh, mm -hmm. And it was very loud and the vibration was very strong and I found that I didn't want to use it. Yeah. I, I was kind of afraid of it. But this one is a variable sander and you used it on level one. I did. Did you it like was, it? It yeah. was Fantastic. I will yeah. say it's a little heavy. It is, but mm -hmm. it does its own. Like It does. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can you don't hold it up, mm -hmm. so it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. You just set it down. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, other than being a little bit heavy, I actually was much quieter than my personal sanders. The ones that I used aren't made anymore, and I buy oh. them on eBay when I see them. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm really cheap. <laughs> And so, you know, I, I I actually think I might invest in one of these because mm, I really like yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it's the only sander I, yeah, I like to use. So if you go to Living Felt, click the FAQs, I'm sure that it's there because we, we just wrote up like a little article to yeah. help answer that question. What else you got, Jordan? Uh, some people are interested in knowing exactly kind of what parts are wet felted and needle felted. Is the background all wet felted and the birds are needle felted? That's or? a good mm-hmm. question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so on here, the background and um, you know all of the leaves and the main part of the birds and some of the bird details are wet felted, and then all of the intricate details around the eye. Um, and the facial lines and a little bit of highlighting and so forth are needle felted. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. Yep. Let's see. Uh, some people are asking some quite intimate details about which wool colors and things. You think you're just <laughs> we'll going to have to tune in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the, the specific details. So what happens with the, the supply list for making what's in the school is you have to register to get it. But um, this will be, I don't think that the kit's going to be overly expensive. All the kits are, are pretty reasonable. With Some of the pictures are really big, but this size is really doable. Yeah. Like the size is doable, the quantity is, is doable too. So yeah, yeah this you'll get is a complete a, list if you when you register for the class. This is a 12 by 15 right here finished, yeah. which is meant to be framed, um, matted at 11 by 14. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a really good size, um, and I think you said it weighed about what three ounces. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not overly heavy. Yeah. Really, really manageable, and I think it's just so much fun. Like now, I want to try. I was sort of fantasizing about what bird would I make. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. you don't, you're not limited yeah. to a macaw by yeah. any means. You can <laughs> use the techniques for some, you know, other type of bird like a toucan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or a any... one can if you want. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple people asking to see a little bit closer look. Uh, could we do an overhead shot? Sure, sure, sure. How, how are we there? Good. Beautiful. Yeah, okay. maybe down a little bit. Just towards you a little bit. Oh. Yeah, perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty. She used, uh, this is all merino top and what we call, uh, you know, luster fibers or embellishment fibers. Um, yeah, fun process to watch. And I like that she teaches a few different um techniques that you can use to mix it up. I mean, like, you know, you give them a few options on how to do things. And I think it's a good primer for doing a felt picture in general, where there is a background and a forefront subject. Even if even if macaws weren't your thing, I think that you would learn a lot from this methodology, giving that a try. Yeah, very cool. Anything else, Jordan, there? Uh, Helen is asking, do you start with like a pre felt or do you just Nope, nope, sorry about that. <laughs> That's another Yeah, every, all the techniques, secret. all the, the specific techniques all come in the class. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Cool. And then, let's see, a lot of people are so excited. They're dreaming of the birds they're going to put together, one blue and one red in one photo. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of Fun. people who have some experience with the sander helping us out in the chat. Nice. Thank you all. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. I'm very excited about this class. I think I think it really is beginner friendly. If you've not wet felted yet, if you've not needle felted yet, one, we have our YouTube channel is just filled with things you can try and projects you can do toe in the water, everything from very, very small pieces. Just learn what a good felt feels like. Take some of the free classes in the school. And then as soon as you sign up, either for our newsletter or as a student in the school, then you're going to be on our email list, which is how everybody finds out when the class is launched. There's always an early bird special when a class goes new and there's a class chat so you can share your works in process with Sonia you can ask her questions and she'll help you along the way so maybe you'll even do a different project and want a little bit of coaching which you and I both tend to do take a class to learn a technique to oh my do gosh something yes, else. Yeah. yes absolutely yeah. so she'll be in the chat to help you out and so just sign up now for the school so that you'll get notified uh, when the class that you want is about to go live so you can get in on that sale and there's always something fun about being in the first group you know of students that are in a class starting yeah. together so cool so i think we have some prizes to give away right jordan i think we do yeah so we have been taking down names or jordan has well
all Sonia and I just get to sit here and, <laughs> and, and chit chat and visit. And we have a couple of prizes uh, to give away. You want to draw a name? Yes. I always <laughs> wanted to draw the name. <laughs> Well, then you know what to do. You watch the show enough times now. I'm going to grab the prizes. Okay, don't tell yet. I'm going to grab the prizes. I know who won. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so we're going to do one. We, we have to do, we're going to do three prizes, actually. Okay, so the first two get to choose from the same prize. And this is a toe-in-the-water uh, wet felting project. What we're giving away is uh, a cobweb scarf kit. So this is a free tutorial on our YouTube channel. We have the full length live one. Or is that one on Facebook? Well, anyway, we did a full length live one and then we have like a 20 minute version where I'm felting in my, my home studio. And you can choose whatever colorway you want. So this is our first two prizes. Y'all get to choose your colorway of the cobweb scarf. Who do you got? I have Sonia Oswalt. No. <laughs> Stinker. Come I on. have Linda Day. And I have Sophia Bakuri. So congratulations. Hold up oh, your name so they oh, can see you. Okay. Congratulations, y'all. <laughs> Thank you so much for participating. Um, and if you didn't win, hang on because we've got one more. You get to draw this one. Now, this is a special uh, prize. Joanne brought in a special gift. So these two are cobweb scarves. Only pick one. Okay, you got one? <laughs> okay. So who do you got? And then I'll tell them what they won. I have Karen Blank. Uh, Karen, congratulations. You win. It's Elmo. No. No, uh, no, uh, no. It's Elrod. El Elwood. Elwood. <laughs> She's going to kill me. I, both of us. She's going to kill both of us. So Joanne from Mudworks brought in Elwood. This was like kind of how her company got on the map was with Elwood. It's a little rainbow pincushion. So Joanne made that herself. And of course, the pottery is her design from her studio. And I have a knitting bowl by her and I have pin cushions by her and all my dishes a good portion of my dishes at home are made by Joanne too so congratulations to you you win Elwood and if you're not winners not in our database at all please go to our website and uh, we're gonna pop that up for you and use the contact us page tell us you were a winner and again this winner's name is Karen Blank okay cool Karen we're gonna put your name right on that with a pin so you get it uh, now if you didn't win if we didn't answer your question uh, if your comment just has to get seen and we didn't call it out one <laughs> thank you so much for being here after the live show comment down below ask your question down below we do read everything that you post and you'll also be entered to win prizes on our next show so until then we'll see you in our group living felt friends you're in there right absolutely I'm uh, yes <laughs> Wait, I spend like all my time in there. <laughs> you can shop with us. All the supplies are in our shop. We answer the phone. We answer our emails. We're here Monday through Saturday. We're in Central Texas. So if you're ever in town, come through. We had a wonderful uh, guest today from uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, she said. Yeah. yeah. So thank you all so much for being with us. Until next time, just be good to yourselves and have a really great week. Bye. Bye. Thank you.